Hey guys, it's Bree. And Z. And today we're reading to Miss Payne's third grade class. Today we read Dust Dwelling by Jake by Jane McKillops. Squeak, squeak, the windmill blades pinwheel in the gentle breeze. Clara closed her eyes and felt the warm sun on her cheeks. It was a bluebird spring morning, not a cloud in the sky. Too beautiful a day to stay indoors. She limped her way across the yard. At the curl, a few barn swallows swooped overhead, chirping. Come here, Sadie, cooed Clara, sneaking a carrot out of her pocket. The mirror pranced toward Clara. Clara, no! Her papa rushed out to the barn. I've told you to stay away from that horse. Claire jumped at hearing his command. She put the carrot back in her pocket, leaned on her crutches, and sighed. That horse could crush you in a second. Go back in the house. But papa, go on now, you hear? Clara swayed across the yard, her crutches leaving little holes in the dirt. Her feet drew wavy lines where they swung along. For the last three weeks, she had snuck out to the corral and trained Sadie to eat a carrot out of her hand. Claire knew Sadie could never harm her. The horse was a bright, the horse was a bright spot in Claire's narrow world. Polio had left her legs weak and withered at age four. She now wore braces surrounding her legs just to stand up and had crutches to help her move about. She had become used to them, but her papa had not. He would not allow her to leave the farm. That meant no school, no trips to town, and no outings to see neighbors. Clara thought he was, just, he was ashamed of her. She let the house door slam behind her as she went inside. Her mama was changing baby Sam's diaper in the bedroom. She had on her she had on her good dress, which meant one, one, only one thing. You going to town, Mama? Her mom no- nodded. Right after your pop Papa finishes the chores, Clara wished she could go too. She wanted to look at the fancy clothes in the store windows. She wanted to watch people walk on the guy guy mom sidewalks. She longed to see and speak to friends and neighbors. I don't suppose began Clara. Mama shook her head. No, I'm sorry. But why? Why can't I go? You know Papa's only trying to protect you. He he thinks others will say or do cruel things and hurt your feelings. Many people think we must have done something bad and your polio was our punishment. So if they see you with us, they'll be reminded that we're bad people and they might not allow us into their stores. But I don't need protecting. I can handle that. I'll stay in the car, Clara argued. Mama. Mama shook her head. No, Clara, not today. I'm sorry. She raised him up and kissed his pudgy neck. Billy can stay here with you. (laughs) Hurt. Hurt, Clara went back outside. At least she would not be left home alone again. She watched as Papa herded her younger sisters, Elizabeth and May, into their old car. Mama got in holding Sam on her lap, and off they went, plums of dust blowing behind on the dirt road. Billy headed straight for the barn. Come on, Clara, I know where Daisy hid her kittens. She followed her younger brother to some hay bales. Look down there, he whispered. Clara peeked between the bales and grinned. Five kittens mewed and tried to walk on shaky legs. Daisy, their mama, kept guard close by. After petting the kittens for a while, a breeze swept into the barn. 
Clara heard birds squawking and went outside. High above her head, flocks of crows flew south. south. Jack rabbits raced so fast across the field, it looked like they were being chased by hungry coyotes. Sadie whined in the, cor in the corral. Panicked, Billy came up behind Clara and pointed to the chickens. Look! All their chickens were rushing into the chicken coop, and the wind was starting to moan. What's going on? whispered Billy. Claire did not know, but she was determined to find out. She went around the barn so she could see toward the north and gasped. A long, pencil-thin black cloud rose across the horizon. It was something she had seen before and hoped she would never see again. Oh no, another dust storm. She yelled, Billy, shut the kitchen coop door. Then put Daisy in, in the kittens in the box and take them in the house. Hurry. Clara, Clara moved faster than she thought possible toward the corral. She had to get Sadie inside the barn before the storm hit. Their horse could die from breathing in too much dust. She reached the corral gate and pushed it open. To move to the barn doorway, giving one loud whistle, she waved the carrot in the air. Sadie, get in here now. The mare raced into the barn and gobbled up the carrot in Clara's hand. Good girl, said Clara. She tried to shut the heavy barn door, but it dragged on the ground. She had to push hard and hold on to her crutches at the same time. Precious time slipped away. Finally, the door shut with a thud and latched. Clara glanced back at the dust storm. The black cloud had, gr had grown tall and thick and billowed across the fields like a massive tornado turned sideways. It howled angrily as it rolled closer and closer. Clara rushed towards the house, 50 feet to go. Her arms ached, but she forced the crutches to hurry, to hurry, hur to hurry, hurry. 40 feet, 30 feet. Clara had only 20 feet left when the storm hit. Dust stung her skin like poking needles. It was so thick she could not see her crutches. She squeezed her eyes shut, remembering the story of old Mr. Kraft, who had gone blind when caught outside in the last dust storm. The ferocious wind threw her down. Claire lay on the ground, trying to hold her breath. Her arms ached um, where she had fallen on it. She had never been so scared, but even with the storm's fury paneling, Pummeling, pummeling her, she knew she had to get inside soon or she would die. The house was straight ahead. She would have to crawl the rest of the way. Keeping her eyes shut, she dragged herself along, braces, crutches, and all. Inch by inch, her hands left their way until they hit something solid. The porch. She pulled herself up the two steps grabbing the doorknob with one hand and holding her crutches with the other. She stood up and turned the knob. The door flew open, taking Clara with it. She fell to the wooden floor, bringing the storm inside with her. She felt Billy's hands around her waist, helping her to stand. Then they both grabbed the door and forced it shut. Clara bent over coughing. Her mouth and nose were packed with dirt. Her eyes stung. Billy patted her back. Are you okay, Clara? She wiped her eyes with a wet cloth Billy brought her. Outside their kitchen window, a shroud of blackness made it seem like night. Dust still blew into the house under the door around the windows, whistling like a high-pitched scream. Clara grabbed the lantern and lit the wick to provide enough light to see. Go get some rags and towels, to she told Billy in a hoarse voice. After drinking a glass of water to clear dust out of her mouth, Clara ran water in the sink and soaked everything Billy brought her. Then she and Billy stuffed the wet material into her, the cracks around the windows and the outside door. They cut down on much of the dust blowing in, but not all. Clara's heart skipped a beat as she saw the walls pulsing in and out like they were breathing. No living thing inside would stand a chance if the walls broke away. 
Both that she and Belly coughed in the dusty air. Bring me the sheets off a bed, she told him. Clara soaked them in the sink, too, and wrung out as much water as she could. Then she pulled a couple of kitchen chairs next to the couch and tented the sheets over them. Bring Daisy in the kittens and crawl under here. The wet sheets will block out some of the dust. Sitting on the couch with the lantern next to her, Clara took a sheet corner and wiped dust from her face. The cold dampness felt good, good against her stinging skin. She did the same for Billy. Daisy trembled with fear, but allowed Clara to wipe off the, du the dust from her nose and the kitten's noses. Finally, Clara could think of nothing else to do. Now they just had to wait out the storm under the sheet tent. Sand crunched between her teeth, her eyes felt swollen, and she could barely hear Billy's voice above the roaring wind. Outside, something crashed onto their porch, shaking the house. Minute by minute, hour by hour, the storm raged on Clara's muscles began to ache as she sat on the crowded couch. Total darkness enveloped them when the lantern out of ran out of kerosene. Another crash, this time from inside, sounding like glass breaking. Clara hoped it was not the window near their tent. Finally, the wind died down and its roaring stopped. Rays of light pierced the darkness. Clara raised the sheet and peered out. A haze of dust filled the air, making it hard to breathe. She stood slowly, stretching to ease her cramping muscles. Clara's crutches crunched on broken glass from a falling picture. She looked around and saw centipedes and other bugs crawling in the dust. Ew! Clara realized they had crawled up from between the floorboards, probably trying to fly, find clean air to breathe. She quickly sat down on the couch. Billy grinned at her reaction. Mom's going to hate this mess, said Clara. Billy stepped over the bugs to open the kitchen door. Clara, look! The outside no longer looked like her farm. It resembled a desert. Dust covered all mama's flowers. Dust covered the rows of vegetables in their garden. Dust covered the young wheat stalks in the field. It looked like all the plants on the farm had been plowed under under and tons and tons of dust poured on top. The farm was cemetery quiet. Even the windmill was silent in the still air. As she stood beside Billy, tears welled up in her eyes. Then Clara heard a few cack cackles in the chicken's coop and a snort coming from the barn. Sadie, Clara... Clara grabbed a wet rag and struggled through deep dust mounds toward the barn. She inched the barn door open. Come here, Sadie, Clara said. The horse stumbled forward. She sneezed and stood still as Clara wiped the dust from her eyes, nose, and mouth. Clara brushed her coat until it sh shone. S Sadie snorted and nodded her head as if to say things. An hour later, Clara cleaned the kitchen table and counters tops while she worried about her parents and siblings. They were probably in town when the storm hit. Billy shoveled dust from the floor and threw it outside. But what if they weren't? What if they weren't in the car? Clara bit her lip. They should have been back by now if they had found shelter. Billy was the first to hear an engine. They looked out the window and saw a roar garter pushing dust off the road. Her family's car followed close behind. They're here, shouted Billy. When the car reached their house, Billy ran straight into his mama's arms. Clara waited on the porch. Are you kids okay? Mama asked, looking back and forth from Billy to Clara. Sure, said Clara. Just a little dusty. I better go check on Sadie, Papa said, roughing Clara's hair. She's okay, said Billy, thanks to Clara. Papa looked confused. Clara? Clara put her in the barn, said Billy. Then she closed the door, and after the storm, she wiped dust out of Sadie's eyes and nose, and she brushed Sadie's coat, and she... Whoa, said Papa, scratching his head. But Billy had to tell the whole story about how Clara saved Sadie. 
Daisy and her kittens and Billy and herself. By the time he finished, Papa was giving Clara a strange look. At first, Clara thought he was mad at her for getting too, so close to, to Sadie. Come out to the corral with me, he told Clara. When they got there, he put a foot on the bottom fence rail and watched Sadie eat oats from a dust-free trout. I suppose you cleaned out the trout too, he said. I suppose I did, said Clara. He was quiet for a long minute. We didn't get all we needed in town before the dust storm hit, so we'll have to go back tomorrow. You want to come along? Clara smiled and stood up straighter. I suppose I do. The, the end. end. Okay, so if you guys can see here, there's a picture of what it would look like in a dust storm. So when these dust storms hit, you just have to hide because if not... Look, you see how dark and black it is? It would look like it was nighttime outside when those dust storms hit. They hit around 1920. This is based off a true story. They had to shelter all their animals and their crops. So. And it, it happened right here in Texas and Oklahoma and surrounding states. Because we had a lot of, like, they, we didn't get a lot of rain. So the dirt just would fly up. It was all up. loose and it would... The wind would pick it up and it would fly everywhere. So it was really dangerous when these dust storms hit. And yeah, we thought it would be a good book for y'all to read. Um, you guys can take an AR test on this. Um, we'll give the number to your teacher if you guys want to take a test and earn some points. And yeah, it was really nice reading to you guys. Yeah, we're really good. Mm -hmm.